Hi guys! So today I thought that we would go through all things Kindle. I have been a proud Kindle girly for definitely over a year now and I really wanted to make this video to tell you guys why I love it. Obviously I still love physical books. I, my bookshelf is bursting at the seams. I was officially influenced and I do not regret my purchase and I want to tell you exactly why. Every time I'm reading on my Kindle, whether it's like around my friends or if I was in class or anything like that, people always ask me, is the Kindle worth it? What do you like about it? You know, just things like that. So I really wanted to make this video so that you can make the best decision for yourself if you're on the fence about getting a Kindle, if you have an old Kindle sitting in your drawer and you literally don't know if you want to pick it up again, or if you just got yourself a little Kindle with the Prime Day deals, then this video is for you. I'm telling you guys, I used to hate digital reading. I could not get behind it. I was a physical book girly through and through and you would not catch me considering buying a Kindle, anything like that. Surprisingly, it is so, so useful. And I am a person who loves holding physical books. I love the physical paperback. I love the smell of books. I just love everything about the physical reading experience. And I thought that that was enough of an argument against me not even getting this. And I completely understand that a Kindle is a pretty big investment for a lot of people. The Kindle I have was definitely over $100, but there are options that are around 80 or 90, so that's a little more affordable. If you haven't already, make sure you like this video and subscribe for more bookish content. I literally just hit a thousand subscribers a few days ago. You guys are so amazing. You guys are always so supportive. I love you. Thank you for a thousand subscribers. You might be asking yourself, what makes someone a Kindle girly? As book talk was blowing up, Kindles started to blow up again. I know a lot of people used Kindles. Don't get me wrong, like so many people did. But at least for me, I rarely saw people like actually making content about Kindles, explaining the benefits, decorating them all cute. Like I never saw any of that until book talk and like Kindle girlies started becoming a thing. It's just basically a whole community of sharing Kindle Unlimited recommendations, sharing Kindle accessories and Kindle hacks. Let's get into some Kindle basics. I have the Kindle Paperwhite. Mine is the 16 gig version. There's adjustable warm and cool light, adjustable brightness, and it is water resistant. You can take this baby to the beach and not worry. I would still, I would still worry about the sand. The sand is a different story. Just saying, just putting it out there. But you can read in the bath, no problem. You can read in the pool, no problem. I'm not saying dunk it underwater, but like if you drop it in for like a second, you're probably fine. If you get some water droplets on it, you're good. I love bringing it on vacation and reading at the beach and reading by the pool. I love reading in the bath for a good relaxation time and I don't have to stress about if I accidentally drop it in. You know, it's just one less worry, but it's definitely not necessary. The Amazon Kindle Paperwhite that I have retails for $150 there are different storage options. When I purchased mine, I really wanted the green color and the only one they had was the 16 gig version. So that's what I got. But even if you get, I think the, the Paperwhite also has an eight gig version. All the files on there are literally like one and two millibytes. Like EPUB files do not take up that much space at all. Don't like feel bad and think you're even gonna come close to running out of room if you get the eight gigs. The one that I have comes in agave green, black, and denim. And denim is like a really cute navy color. I don't know if you've seen, but there's like certain Kindles have ads when you lock it. So it doesn't show the book cover. It shows like random ads for other books. Don't ask me why Amazon does that. I actually think it's the stupidest thing in the world, but okay. Like I'm already paying for the device. I'm paying for the subscription. And now you're gonna put ads on my device? No, that's crazy. And to get the ads off, there is an option to pay $20 more. And there's also an option after you buy it to, oh, I wanna remove the ads, let me pay $20. Bestie, do not pay that $20. Let me tell you about a hack. You contact customer service through the Amazon account that your Kindle is like registered under and you tell them, hey, is there any way to get the ads off of my lock screen? The ads are inappropriate for my family, the ads are inappropriate for my workplace, something like that. And 
usually the customer service agent will take them off for free. And when I tell you some of those ads, especially if you're a romance reader, it'll suggest a lot of romance books and it'll, um, it'll be some questionable ads. If a customer service agent tells you you're gonna have to pay $20 or won't give it to you free, disconnect the chat and start a new one because I'm telling you I got this for free and when I made a TikTok video about this, so many people got the ads off of their Kindle for free and then you can go in the settings and set on the display to add the book cover of whatever you're currently reading and that's how you do it for free. I think that is literally the best life hack ever because the whole ad thing is genuinely such a scam. So yeah, do not pay $20, no matter what, bestie. So before I got my Kindle, anytime I would travel on vacation, especially like vacations to the beach, leisurely vacations where I know I'll have a lot of downtime to read, I would be bringing like five books. Like I'm not even kidding. I read really fast and usually on vacation, I get through lots of books. So here's like a normal standard book and here is the size of the Kindle so much thinner and this can literally house thousands of books so instead of lugging around five or ten physical copies for books i knew i was gonna get through you just take this and slip it in your bag and you have access to your whole library it has actually been life-changing for traveling it helps me pack lighter when i still want to read more i don't have to compromise space in my bag and i also don't have to compromise reading time while i'm on vacation i can literally do whatever i want so there are some really really cool and unique features about the kindle that i specifically love in the bottom left corner there's options that you can tap through where it'll tell you what page number you're on it'll tell you how many minutes you have left in the chapter i feel like i read so fast on my kindle because I'm motivated, it'll be like two minutes left in a chapter and I'll be like, oh, I can do this. And then, okay, after this chapter, I'll stop. And then you'll see the next chapter, three minutes left in this chapter. And you're like, okay, I can do three minutes. I can do it. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're done with the book. It is a very, very useful feature, especially for like long books, just like constantly wanting to beat that timer because the Kindle adjusts to your reading speed. So it is accurate. Like when I first got my Kindle, I would time myself on my phone. It's pretty accurate. It's like one of the best features ever. There's also, you can adjust the brightness. When you're out in the sun, like at the beach in direct sunlight, there's no glare. You can turn down the brightness all the way and you'll still see the words on the screen. It's not the same as your phone, where if you turn down the brightness, the screen goes black because Kindles have e-ink technology, so their battery lasts so long. And when I say so long, I'm talking multiple weeks without having to be charged. I probably only charge my Kindle once a month because the main thing that depletes your battery is obviously like browsing, connecting to the internet, but also the backlit screen. So like obviously if you're reading in the dark and you have the brightness up, that's going to deplete your battery, but it's still not a lot. I have my brightness on all the time and I still only charge it once a month, but like it's a little hard to explain, but yeah, that's how e-ink works. I no, I'm not even kidding. There was one night after I got my Kindle, I was just thinking about it because I'd heard obviously this is like a paper like display and things like that. And I was just very confused. I knew like e-ink was a thing, but I just didn't understand it. And it literally kept me up one night. Like I had something's wrong with me. I had to look up a video about how e-ink works and how Kindles work and that genuinely explained so much about why the battery life lasts so long and all the little nerdy things about the particles and the charges and things like that of how it shows text. If you're into that nerdy stuff, go look up how an e-ink display works. It is genuinely so interesting. So the next important thing to know about a Kindle, if you are a romance book girl, you are gonna have no problem finding books that you like on Kindle Unlimited. Most of the books on Kindle Unlimited are either romance books or thrillers. There are like tons of different categories, don't get me wrong. It's up to the publisher, it's up to the author, so most indie authors because kindle direct publishing is so so simple for a lot of authors starting out who don't have publishers most indie authors are on kindle unlimited like kindle unlimited for an author means that they get paid per unique click that you click through so that's how they're getting paid for having their book on kindle unlimited but they can only sell digital copies of their book on Amazon. So like they couldn't sell an ebook version of their book on Barnes and Noble or a competitor or something like that. So for example, this is a great example. Bloom publishes 
all of Lauren Asher's books, most of Elle Kennedy's books. Bloom Publishing publishes so many of like the mainstream romance books. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure all of their books are on Kindle Unlimited. There's certain publishers like that and then there's also indie authors who publish on Kindle Unlimited. So there are tons and tons of options for romance girls. If you are not into romance at all, if you're like into nonfiction or literary fiction, things like that, I don't know what the selection's like, but I've heard it's just not as good. So I would definitely say it is way more worth it to have a Kindle Unlimited subscription if you like love romance. And honestly, Kindle Unlimited has gotten me into so many more indie authors than like ever before. There's just so many books on here that are not at the bookstore. Now I see a book on TikTok, especially from an indie author just trying to promote their book. And they're like, oh, it's on Kindle Unlimited. I'm like, sweet, because Barnes and Noble doesn't even like sell them, you know? So it just opens you up to so many more options, so many crazy, amazing books. I really had never read indie authors before because I just loved physical books and I wasn't even really on that side of Amazon. I was usually just buying from publishers and things like that, but this has really, really opened up my reading experience to indie authors. At Kindle Unlimited is $11.99 a month. I'm pretty sure there is a free trial if you are a new customer. If you've never had Kindle Unlimited before, you can get your first three months for free and you basically get to borrow 20 books at a time from the Kindle Unlimited library. So when you reach those 20 books, in order to borrow a new book, you have to like return one of the ones you have. And you can keep them for as long as you want. There's no due date like a regular library. And when you're ready, you can return it. Or when your subscription ends, they all go back. Like you don't officially own any of these books. You're just borrowing them. If you have any like specific questions about Kindle Unlimited, like more specific than what I went over, I will be more than happy to answer you in the comments really about anything Kindle wise. If As for Kindle stickers, I absolutely love getting cute bookish stickers from like TikTok shop and Etsy, but surprisingly, you know those random like sticker packs from Amazon? Like there's, some of them are really good and they're only like $5 for like a hundred stickers. I actually just updated like decorating it, but it is so cute. I have all these little bookish stickers, this one I actually got from TikTok shop and the rest of these, I forgot where I got this one at. This is like a Taylor Swift one, but literally every single other one is from like a sticker pack on Amazon. Decorating my Kindle has been a very um therapeutic experience. It is just genuinely so much fun for me to pick out the cute stickers I want and to like organize it and all that stuff. So I just genuinely love that process and I also have a clear case on my Kindle. My stickers are not on the outside of my case. My stickers are on my Kindle, but they're like taped down with scotch tape. So I like double loop some scotch tape. See, they're not like actually stuck. So whenever I want to rearrange my Kindle stickers, I just take off the scotch tape and rearrange my stickers and they hold in the case and you're not stuck to just one design. So as for Kindle accessories, so many people just attach a pop socket right to their case. That is completely fine. That's what I did at first. I have a MagSafe little system. I bought a pack of MagSafe rings like this. They're just little sticker rings from Amazon. They come in like a six pack. I think it was like four bucks. It's not that bad at all. And you just peel off the sticker, stick it to the case. And I have this stand the silver part is by itself and it has a ring stand on it like this so I can like prop up my Kindle, do whatever, or I can close it and I put a pop socket in the middle. So the pop socket does not come with it, but I can still hold the pop socket and this is completely removable and adjustable. It's so convenient, especially because this ties into the other parts of my setup. I'm sure you've seen on TikTok those girls who have like the big gooseneck adjustable stands on their headboard and they like hook their Kindle into it. Let me just give you a fair warning. I have one of those stands. Sometimes depending on your bed setup, it can be like, I don't know, it's not the most convenient thing in the world. They're kind of hard to adjust because those goosenecks specifically are like very heavy duty. Like they can hold an iPad. They're very strong. So I'll literally have to like adjust mine with two hands and it's, it's a little rough. It's doable, but it's not my favorite thing in the world. And if you have a pop socket on or something like this that you can't remove with MagSafe, the little clip it has is not deep enough 
for all of this. So you really, really need to be able to take this off and have your Kindle be able to lay completely flat for most of like the setups where you have to like hook it into something. But what I do use a lot, I actually got this stand because I saw it on TikTok shop and I bought it from Amazon. I'm gonna have everything in this video linked below. Everything is literally on my Amazon storefront or on my TikTok shop. This is like a Kindle pillow stand and it has a snack bowl in it. This is completely adjustable. Look at this, completely adjustable. This can tilt, of course. And there's a little screw thing on the bottom here so you can take out the bowl to wash it. I haven't used this for snacks yet and I'll actually store my automatic page turner. Yeah, yeah. I have the whole setup. Am I am I an overconsumption goddess? Maybe, but I'm comfortable. I'm having a fun reading experience, so I don't regret it at all. But this pillow is so much more portable than and like adjustable than the whole gooseneck thing. So I personally like this a lot more for reading in bed because I can like sit it on my lap if I want to. I can easily move it to my side, things like that. After I take off the MagSafe setup, I just hook it right into the pillow stand and then I'll add my page turner and it's actually the best hands-free reading experience ever. And I also just showed really quick how to customize the margins on your Kindle so you can make sure the page turner is hitting the display correctly. This whole thing, this whole getup right here is literally my go-to setup and I'm so comfy. I will literally lay and rot in my bed for hours on end because I'm just so comfy I don't need to get up, especially if I put snacks in that bowl. Yeah, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up. I'm binging this book. For reading at night, it is so nice. I can have all the lights off on my room, have the brightness up on my Kindle, and just be reading, reading, reading until I go to sleep. If you are a diehard physical book girl, there's going to be a lot of books that you're still just going to want the physical copy for. So if that's the type of person you are and you just really, really want that trophy sitting on your bookcase, it's not gonna save you money. I'm not the type where I need to have like every single book I've ever read. Usually what I do, when I'm in the bookstore, I kid you not, I will pull up the Kindle app on my phone. Like say I picked up this book, for example, A False Start by Elsie Silver. If I picked it up, I look it up on my phone. Oh, it's on Kindle Unlimited? Okay, I don't need to buy this from the bookstore. And instead, I will spend my hard earned money on physical books that are not included in my Kindle Unlimited membership. And I, Cause I get like double the books and I feel like I'm saving money. I, I think that's girl math. I really, I really think that's like the epitome of girl math is like the Kindle Unlimited logistics, you know? Like I I've, I've actually feel like a mastermind when I'm like, oh, I'm saving so much money when I just spent like $200, but I'm saving so much money. That is really all you need to know about buying a Kindle. Once I really sat down and started looking at TikToks about the features and all of that stuff, all the perks, all the accessories, I was like, oh my gosh, I can read so much more comfortably. I love reading at night. I just genuinely felt like this was a really good decision for me. And yes, it was a little bit of an investment at the start, but I definitely feel like it's worth it. And I really find myself, I can't believe I'm saying this. I really can't believe I'm saying this. I really find myself like preferring to read on my Kindle. If you are a student, if you have a full-time job, which obviously is most adults, literally just put this in your little bag and go and you have access to all of the books on your library. You can download books for planes. You don't have to constantly be connected to Wi-Fi. Like really the possibilities are so endless. I genuinely hope that this video helped you decide whether or not to buy a Kindle, whether it's the right decision for you. But all of the products I've talked about in this video are going to be linked on my Amazon storefront down in the description. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I hope this video was helpful for you and that you enjoyed watching it. And I will see you next time, besties.